Australian poet had once said, feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. The perception, as we know, brings into play heavy inequalities. So, and I've said this before, and I'm going to address this question yet again. Why do we need separate awards for women when there is a forceful view on gender neutral recognition? In contests of intellect or artistry, should gender matter? Well, we don't live in a gender neutral world. Global studies have shown that women are underrepresented in most mainstream awards. The less awarded they are, the less recognized they remain. Women of Worth, brought to you by L'Oreal Paris in association with NDTV, have come together in a move to fight the lack of acknowledgement our women face. Yet, in spirit, these awards are gender neutral. The women of Worth who are present at the venue today would be winners in whichever stage they took. They are brave, incredible, forceful, inspiring, and have a highly motivating body of work. We are all gathered here to recognize their outstanding and impactful work. And now I'd like to invite our partners in this journey, Manshi Guha, Vice President Marketing and L'Oreal India, to say a few words to us. Manshi. We started this program in 2012 and this was started basically as a platform uh, to recognize women who selflessly contribute uh, you know, towards our communities. Now in this year, in partnership with NDTV, I'm very glad to say we have reached over 20 million people with this, uh, with this platform and we have garnered uh, to uh, over 7 lakh votes. We all look up to strong and independent women. There's something I have learned in these five years of journey uh, with Women of Worth. And some of these qualities that these women have are humility, first and foremost. So although you know they've achieved so much of success, they remain very well grounded. For instance, if you remember what Margaret Thatcher said, she said that uh, you know a woman who's able to understand the problems of the home is someone who can run the nation very effectively. So I guess most of these women I've met are extremely grounded. They dream and they think a lot and far beyond, you know, um, uh, and think about the road less, uh, less traveled. Uh, they are unafraid and they dare to stand out, uh, you know, for their, for their courage and, and they're never worried to speak their mind. Yeah. Manchi, thank you very much for those inspiring words. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for a musical interlude. A special anthem has been created for the Women of Worth Award, conceptualized and written by Prasun Joshi, with music composed by Shantanu Moitra and sung by Harsh, De Harsh Deep Kaur. We are absolutely overwhelmed with their support. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Harsh Deep for this very special performance. Mere nile nile hai chala, mera jhula chule asma. Kuzre mujh se ho kar mausam, mere udia udio hai uda. Mujh naaz hai, mujh naaz hai, mujh naaz hai. Kud pe naaz hai, kud pe naaz hai. Team and belief, we should begin with you know, with our first award for this evening, and Which that is? is in the category of literature. Literature. So let's now invite onto the stage Kailash Kher, the eminent singer, along with Amish Tripathi, famous writer of the Shiva trilogy and Sayana Vishwaku, to come and present the award for literature. We dedicate these awards to the women, not just the writers of immense popularity and acclaim, but also to those who are creating new forms regional polemics and identity, reviving lost literature and creating platforms for contemporary expressions. Let's take a look at the nominees in the category of literature. The nominees in the category of literature are Jaya Jha. She supports struggling authors, post, publish, print and sell books at a drastically reduced cost. 
Shrimoi Piyu Kundu. Her book, Sita's Curse, is India's first feminist English erotica novel creating a dialogue about shame, inhibition and sex. Ruby Hembrom. She has created an archiving and publishing platform for Adivasis that revives Adivasi literature. Anuradha Roy. She was the only Indian long-listed for the Man Booker Prize 2015 for her third novel, Sleeping on Jupiter. And the winner is Shrimoi Piyo Kundu. Many congratulations and how many times did you have people coming up to you and while you were writing the book, researching the book and saying, what are you doing? Why would you write a book like this about sex? Actually, it was my women friends who shockingly and, uh, you know, something that I really pondered on, they were shocked and they kept asking me, why are you writing a, you know, a feminist erotica on a married woman? You know, why don't you do the next Fifty Shades of Grey so that it sells a million copies? You know, so I think that's very sad, you know, Vikram, that at the end of the day in India, the middle class Indian housewife is almost an in, you know, she's almost like an invisible entity. Who is she behind that ghungat? You know, the woman at the railway station with two kids, you know, absolutely stunning woman with sometimes an obnoxious man. And you think, who is this woman who waits by the window, who lives in a little airless chawl? So this book, and I would dedicate this award to all those women, you know, who literally lack a voice in India. All right, let's, let's move on to our next category, art. Um, we dedicate these awards to those women in this art-rich and art-diverse country who have broken new grounds, who have become hope for revivalism, kept up tradition, brought in new adaptations, and of course, empowered both art and artists. Let's look at the nominees in this category. The nominees in the category of art are Kalki Subramaniam. The first transgender woman to star in a major film, Kalki has established a strong transgender rights community with a global outreach. Neha Kirpal. Her event brings in over 100,000 footfalls each year, providing a platform to over 1,100 artists before global curators and collectors. Shrijata Roy. She uses conventional art as well as mixed media to produce narratives in parks, walls, even chai shops, triggering dialogues. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner in this category is Neha Kirpal. She is a toast of the art world and no, she doesn't paint herself. But her broad strokes have created a canvas for artists in India like never before. Uh, fortunately, Neha couldn't actually join us, but we did have a, we did tell her about the award and we, we, uh, we told her as to why she had got it. She did send us a very special message which we are now going to play out for you. I'd like to thank L'Oreal and NDTV for initiating something like this. It's phenomenal to see the response that these awards have received from the public across the country. And there is so much spirit and support for the India Art Fair, but for everything else that's going on in the arts. I'm happy to receive this on behalf of hundreds and thousands of women and, and people engaged in the arts community, artists, critics, curators, working tirelessly. This is real recognition for the entire arts ecosystem. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I'm very grateful for the encouragement and the support that we receive. Thank you. She may not be present, but a winner, a woman of worth. And now we move to the category of education. And to present this award, we have a very special person. She embodies glamour and exudes the elegance of natural beauty. She is effortless in her style and her grace. She's intelligent, sensitive, and self-made. She is the golden girl of contemporary cinema. She, she joined the L'Oreal Paris family two years ago. To present this award, we welcome on stage none other than the gorgeous Katrina Kaif. And along with her, we'd like to invite Mr. Satyaki Ghosh, Director, Consumer Products Division, L'Oreal India. Uh, 
uh, walk up onto the stage. This is really a, a segment which is dedicated to the women uh, who have strengthened our education system with new ideas, engaging techniques, and learning networks. Their efforts maximize India's access to physical classrooms, to virtual teachers, to high quality and low cost education, and also to scalable innovations. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the nominees in this category of education. The nominees in the category of education are Safina Hussain. She strikes out at gender inequality in India's education system with a reform model that is implemented in 8,000 schools. Shaheen Mistri. Her vision provides about 5,000 children from low-income communities with a high-quality education by enabling school reforms. Pranshu Bhandari Patni. Her Hello English is an interactive app that allows the speakers of 16 languages to learn English. It is the number one English learning and speaking app on Google Play. Farida Lambe. Her organization's Read India program helps 33 million children in the age group of 6 and 14 years improve reading, writing and basic math. Katrina, I'm going to say what Vikram should have said. You look absolutely sensational tonight. That's very, very sweet of you. <laughs> V uh, uh, yeah, so what, what's Vikram's new? playing the conservative card what's tonight. Was the question I was about he, to say. He's playing the conservative card tonight. <laughs> it's in but, serious mode. By the way, but did so anybody finally contact you for that uh, Charlize Theron look, the buzzed hair? Nobody did yet, no. For okay. those of us who didn't get to that conversation, we are planning to do an Indian version of, uh, I don't know if any of you saw Mad Max. So Charlize Theron's role, role strong, she took over the movie. She was the hero of the movie, according to me. So we're working on that together. So Kat Katrina says that if you can spread the message, if anybody wants to give me a role like that, I'm happy to shave my hair. Absolutely. Go for a, for a stubble cut. So. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this evening yet again. And um, I think I'm very lucky that, again, this year I got to uh, present a category, which to me is um, personally something that I connect with for two reasons. One is that my mom, who this year was not able to come, but she works herself in ch a charitable organization um, in education to educate um, kids very, uh, very young, and she works on the curriculum herself. So it's something which um, I do understand the kind of work that goes behind it and the kind of work these amazing, amazing women put into doing things like this and tirelessly and uh, without any recognition and without any... Um, you know, a pat on the back, so to say. These are the women who are spreading love and care in the world. And I think if we have um, a few more women like this in the world, it will be a better place. So it's really a great honor to be here tonight. And the, uh, I think the recipient of this award, if I can announce her to come on stage, is um, Safina Hussein. What, what prompted you to target gender inequality at the school level? Um, you know, India has the highest number of out-of-school girls anywhere on the planet. We have the highest number of child brides anywhere in the world, and the highest number of women and girls in sexual and other forms of slavery. And it was the humongous problem that confronts us in terms of gender inequity that really kind of pushed me. And we also have 3.3 million NGOs. And I saw that there was a lacking in terms of a scalable, replicable model for girls' education, per se. You know, you mentioned scale, and that's, that's a really interesting point, because when people start working on a problem like education in a country like India, especially for a private person, sometimes it's a very daunting challenge, because the biggest question you must be asked is, how do you make it scalable? How do you do more than affecting a small handful of people? And is that something that you kept in mind, that it should be something which can scale? I think for gender, for me, it had to be scalable um, because gender is a mindset problem. It's up in our heads. So if I talk to you about the importance of girls' education and somebody in New York and then somebody in rural Rajasthan, nothing changes. You have to do it at scale. You have to get everybody to change their minds. You want everybody to believe that sons and daughters are equal and it's the right for each girl to go to school. And so therefore, scale was absolutely a non-negotiable for me. Um, and you have to do it by creating a scalable, replicable model and having the right people support you. Katrina, 
Um, in a sense, again, looking at the scale of the problem, the large number of girls either keep dropping out of school, some of them don't go to school, some of them drop out of school, and for a variety of reasons. I mean, toilets is one of them. They don't have access to toilets and they drop out. Um, this is something which we need more initiatives like this to try and, try and crack. I really do think that the biggest change we can make is education. What you know is how powerful you feel, and for every woman, no matter what topic it's about, whether it's in your profession, whether it's um, for you personally to build strength of character, I th do th believe that education and knowledge is where we get our power from. Right. Thank you. Haji's congratulations to Safina. our next segment, and that's the category of business. Let's invite onto the stage Mr. CBL Srinivas, CEO of Group M South Asia, and uh, Mr. Paresh Maithi, one of India's most influential artists, to present the next award. Ladies and gentlemen, we dedicate these awards to the women who have emerged as disruptors, critically challenging the doyens and creating a new for-profit language. The nominees in the category of business and entrepreneurship are Patricia Narayan. The day she began, she sold one cup of coffee for 50 paise. Today, she owns a restaurant and catering chain. Vani Kola. She is the reigning VC in India's e commerce. Her investment lineup include Mintra, Flipkart, Urban Ladder, Apps Daily, and Zivame. Pabi Rabadi. Babi used her Hari Jari embroidery skills to start her bag company in her village. Two years later, she has customers across the world. Richa Singh To reach out to students and professionals who suffer stress and breakdowns, Richa has created an online counselling helpline, Your Dost. Gentlemen. It is Bani Kola. I just wanted to ask you, we, we've seen that there are large parts of corporate India where women have made a major impact. Banks obviously come to mind. You know, look at the number of, of banks that are led, uh, headed by, by women. In the startup world, is it far more difficult for women entrepreneurs to come out and get funding or to get people to back them? Yeah, because there's a long uh, skill set that's needed and the journey has to start from girls liking math girls willing to go into technology, and girls willing to go into business. And I was just talking earlier that also maps the peak of your career when you need to focus also maps to when you need to focus on your family. So if you want to have it all, you've got to figure out how to balance all those things. Thank you so much and many congratulations. Right, let's move on to our next major category, social impact. And we dedicate these awards to the women who made breakthrough interventions in grassroots developments, their models and movements create livelihood, provide improved education and healthcare, uphold the principles of sustainability, and establish equity in terms of gender and opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, our next presenter is every woman yet unique. She is a mother, a daughter, a wife, a professional. She is modern yet rooted in the Indian ethos and values. She has charted her own path and has been a source of immense inspiration to many. The roles she has essayed in her cinematic career are legendary. She has been the face of L'Oreal Paris for over 13 years. She is charismatic, inspiring, confident, and beautiful inside and out. Ladies and gentlemen, let me call on stage the one and the only Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. And along with her, we'd like to invite on stage once again, Manushi Guha. Before you open that envelope, uh, would you like to share your thoughts on this particular category? What you'd like to say, something about... Thank you, Mandira. Thank you, Vikram, for such 
a warm and exceedingly generous welcome. Today, I would just like to thank L'Oreal first for choosing me to be your poster girl. When five years ago, we decided together to have this platform to celebrate all you lovely ladies, all through these five years and this evening, all women of worth who've done so much for us socially, who work selflessly, tirelessly, committing yourselves to various areas of society that a lot of us um, talk about, and NDTV will agree with me, whenever we get the opportunity to give voice to various areas that we believe deserves attention, but you are the ladies who are going out there doing the hard work. And we truly believed that it's important for all of us here, voices of society that I also see here, and get the opportunity year after year to see how we come together to celebrate these very women who make a difference. And thanks to NDTV, thank you for coming on board. One more feather on, in your cap. <laughs> Naturally. Amongst <laughs> all the lovely work that you have drawn attention to over the years. But it's great that you have chosen this as well, and you've chosen to partner with us and help bring attention, because we have to. We have to partner and come together. It's only then that we get the chance to um, draw attention, and it's important for us to applaud these very women. So God bless you all. Thank you for impacting the lives of children, of women tirelessly. And without further ado, it's time to laud yet another group of ladies before I announce the winner. So let's hear it for the nominees. The nominees in the